Hi Thumos and welcome back. We got to talk. Today we're talking about the collect, create, and community cycle. The three C's. Collect, create, community. This cycle, I believe that if you have in your life, you're going to feel empowered. You're going to feel on purpose. And if you don't have a purpose yet, you're going to discover your purpose. You're going to feel invigorated for what's ahead of you. You're not going to feel confused. You're not going to be stuck in the cycle of confusion, consuming, and complaining. You'll be stuck in a cycle that promotes growth and success in your life to actually get towards the things that you want. This is I've seen this in my life time and time again, so I'm going to try to break this down for you. The first thing is collect. And what I mean by collect is that you collect yourself. You spend time every day collecting your thoughts. You have time to think. You realign your purpose. This could be in the morning. This could be at night. I know there's many night owls. I don't think it really matters what time you have to collect yourself, but to begin to gather supplies. You can think of it as a hunt. Before the hunt, you gather supplies. You sharpen your arrows. You buy ammunition. You get the party ready to go. You map out your target, the goal, where you want to be. I've seen this time again in my life that, uh, you know, first thing in the morning, I would read devotions as a young boy. I'd wake up, I'd be spending the night at my friend's house. And I had this idea instilled in me by my parents that I needed to do devotions every single morning. And I'd wake up early and I'd crack open the Bible. And I would usually read from like Psalms or Proverbs, um, sometimes the gospel in the New Testament. And I would just read these words and I would let them sort of, you know, just make their way into my head. Sort of change how I thought about the day. I would renew my mind in the morning. And you actually see this in a lot of religions. You see... The Muslims, they wake up and they do prayer. They read a bit of the Quran. The Christians read the Bible, have this morning devotion, say prayer. The Hindus, they say Ja, prayer, Om. They begin their day with something, uh, 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 speaking to God, realigning their minds, recentering themselves, maybe even expressing gratitude. You see the Buddhists, meditation sitting in silence, maybe Zen meditation, there's multiple forms of meditation, yoga. And I think that uh, this time, which I've also called the sacred hour, or meeting with the muse during this sacred hour is vitally important for your life. This is part of the collect, the beginning of the collect, create community cycle. That's Getting in touch with that muse, you can call it God, getting in touch with God, what purpose he has for your life, what do you need to do today, where do you want to go in this life, what's his purpose for you, focusing, recentering on that, because a lot of times, you know, we just get up, we just go, 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 that's the world we live in, you know, this hustle, grind, go, 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 we never stop to really collect, to get to know ourselves, and who we are. So I think this, this part in the cycle is vitally important, vitally important for you to do. And you'll see that being human, what we have in our hearts, that's what we build with our hands. And so if you have anger, resentment, maybe, maybe a nihilistic view on life, you know, it's very hard to create from that abyss. It's very hard for what you consume not to impact how you build with your hands, what you put out into the world. You build with your hands what you have within your heart. You can see great artists that are inspired by other artists or by other things. You can see great authors are usually very, uh, they're, they're readers themselves. They're inspired by other people that have done it before them. Many fantasy authors were inspired by Tolkien, the Lord of the Rings. Many sci-fi authors were inspired by Herbert, I believe his name was, the author of Dune. You see people like uh, in the video game industry, even Miyazaki, you know, that creator of the Dark Souls trilogy, the creator of Elden Ring. I had the 
pleasure to play that last year. What an amazing game. You know, he came out and shocked the gaming world. And Miyazaki was greatly inspired by the creator of Berserk, the manga. Berserk, which is, you know, I haven't read it, but I've looked into it. I've always liked that character, Guts, that big, broad sword that he carries around. And, you know, this sort of going through this world, this just dark and dismal world, but finding a way through that. And be, being strong in the face of all this, you know, just evil and this chaos. And when you play the Elden Ring, you see that he was greatly inspired by this. And he created this world that you can sort of play in and become stronger in. And so we're always inspired. We create with what we have in our hearts. And so I think that this part of the cycle, this time to collect yourself, is not only to just center yourself and give thanks to God and gratitude, but it's a time that you're gathering supplies and inspiration for when you enter the next part of the cycle, which is create. And so that your creation is good. And you can look at your creation and say, I'm proud of this. I'm, this is good. This is what I want. Because what, in your, what is in your heart is good. And you can look at your creation. You can feel inspired to create. You talk with that muse in the morning during that sacred hour when you get up you're not just, you know, going on Instagram and, and consuming a bunch of other BS and news and fear. You're spending time to get to know yourself and to get ready to have creative thoughts. You're speaking with this muse. I've been doing this myself and man, what a game changer it has been. I feel so much more at peace. I look forward to the future, but I'm also very grateful for the present. I feel inspired. I feel joy in my life. I don't have this fear that comes when I, you know, too many days where you just wake up and you're just boom, boom, boom. You give no, yourself no time to settle down. That can, that can get you pretty afraid, you know. So this is time to gather supplies before the hunt. And I highly recommend that you do this. Because last thing I'll say about the cycle is, again, I feel like if you miss out on the cycle, it does. It leads to just confusion, consuming to escape that pain of not knowing what you want to do. Not as a man, you know, you you need to be creative. Like there's a, your heart wants to pour out some energy and it wants to make the world a better place. It wants to help people because you're a man and you can do that. You can rebuild others. You can lift them up when they're down. And I think that if you don't answer that very innate call inside of a man, when you don't protect the tribe, when you don't go out to hunt, when you don't have some work that you're proud of, it's going to lead you to some dark places. And so that cycle of consuming, you know, um, confusion and complaining, that can ultimately corrupt the spirit. And so it's our, our jobs as men, we have to protect the spirit. And so use some part of your day to collect, all right, to center yourself. Let's move on to the, the next, which is create. And this is the part where... You set out on the hunt. This is your work. So if collection is about gathering energy, creating is about giving energy, the giving of oneself, the giving of all that energy you've built up. You know, you've, you're starting to go super sane. You know, you can't, you can't bottle in all this energy. Where's it's going to, where is it going to go? You're going to drive yourself mad. You got to give it. You got to give to get your work, your business, your craft, your art. This is your mastery. This is what you're spending your time giving putting out in the world. This is where you set out on your hunt. The target or goal has been acquired. Action must be taken. Let's just stop here for a second. Like, I think a lot of guys, they are, uh, they maybe feel stuck, right? And so you're going to work. I felt stuck many times in life. And when I've abided, when I've lived according to the cycle, I feel like it helped me get unstuck. All right. I had the cycle first off starting. I was a I was a young man in high school. I would get up, I'd walk to school, right? It's time to collect. I would go to school, collect information. And then after work, I would go to my job. I would create pizza dough. I was literally a dough boy. And I would chop up the onions, I'd make fresh dough, add the yeast, add the flour, add the water. I would try to create this perfect dough every time. And I knew right away I would fill that dough, I'd start kneading the dough. And uh, I could nail it. I didn't even need to look at a recipe anymore. And I was making the best dough in that place. I'd get creative too with some things. I'd just, I'd be more efficient. I'd get creative with my efficiency, how I was doing stuff, how I was attacking that list of things to do. 
so that it made work a little bit more enjoyable. I was gamifying the work I was doing. And then after this, I remember I was playing, I would go home, I'd run home, and I'd play Call of Duty with my friends. This is my community. So I had the cycle here. I had that collect, I had this creative, this work, and then I had my community, my, my friends playing Call of Duty. We had our little clan. And then I would, you know, I only got to play for an hour or two because my mom would say, but then I would hang out with my family, maybe my friends in real life, and, uh, you know, have that family time, that community time. When I went on to work in car sales, I would have this, the perfect morning routine for me. And I knew I would do way better during this day of selling if I woke up and I worked out and I sat in the sauna for like 10 minutes. But to do that, I had to wake up a little bit earlier. But every time I did that, guys, like my sales day was way better. I was on it, dude. I had collected the energy from working out. You know, I felt pumped up. That sauna just, you know, purifying my body, setting my mind right. And then I would go into work. It's time to create. It's time to create some sales. And a lot of times there'd be days where it was slow. You'd look at the other sales guys, they weren't doing anything. They're on their phones. They're just at the coffee pot, you know, they're just moping around. And um, a lot of times I had to scoop the nuts and I had to say, all right, how the hell am I going to create some freaking sales? So I'd hit the phones, you know, I'd hit the phones. I'd try different pitches on the phone, leaving different voicemails. I would um, send emails, try a little bit differently. I would start to, I was like, man, this is, I've, I've hit all my leads. What am I going to do? So I'd go around. I would talk to the people that were there fixing their cars a few times. You know, I sold people cars that had an older vehicle. No one was talking to them, though. But I took the chance to, to just say, hi, how are you doing? What kind of car are you driving? What's it in here for? Hey, are you interested in checking out the new cars that we have in, in here? You want to test drive one? A lot of times they were interested, right? Make a sale like that. So you had to get creative. And I think any guy can take from that is, is you don't got to be an entrepreneur to be creative. You can be creative at your work. You know, when uh, you're just coming up with new ideas, maybe approaching the boss, you got a new idea, a new way to, a new process for things. A new, new something, new ways of doing things that you see in the company and you take it upon yourself like, oh, I can make this better. I see a gap, a blind spot that maybe the, the CEO doesn't see, the manager, and I can fill that. And for that, you're rewarded because you make their life easier. You make their business better. I think a lot of guys just show up to work, right? Again, that, that corporate lifestyle, that confusion, just getting through the day, nine to five, and then they clock out, boom, and is, is going to consume. You know, just some form of entertainment, something to just get me, get me out of my head for all that BS I just dealt with. But you have an opportunity here. You have an opportunity to create. And uh, I think, again, every man needs this creative outlet in his life. And the internet was truly, I believe, the best thing for you to create. It's also the worst thing for your creativity. It is truly, the internet is truly a double-edged sword. Because... For the first time in history, you had the ability as an individual to broadcast a message or an idea, a set of ideas to, you just had, to, I, you could broadcast it to everyone. You could put it out there. And if your idea made sense, if it was, it resonated with a few people, they would pay attention to you. But another thing is it gave you so much of other people's ideas that you stop really trusting your own. And getting to know yourself. And a lot of times, there's just so much, you know, there's so much entertainment. There's so much you could be looking at and, and being entertained and amused by. But you really got to use it as like a tool. This internet is a tool for you. It's a way to connect. It's a way to be creative, to, to put your creativity out there. It's a way to be inspired, but you got to use it. You don't always want to pay attention to everything. I know it's a big thing these days. If you're even a little bit curious, well, here you go. Here's the internet. Everything's freaking curious, man. I'm curious about everything. It's all at my fingertips, right? So you go down rabbit holes, and I think it's uh, you should be aware. And you should, again, go back to the cycle. You collect, then you have every day, you, you spend time creating something, okay? And that is really it for the create part. 
again, if you have any questions about this, if any of this doesn't make sense to you, just talk to me about it. This is, again, things I want to talk to you about. I talk to the men's community about this. The next thing is community and tribe. Connected. A man is made to be connected. Man is not meant to be alone. Okay? Man is not meant to be alone for extended periods of time. Complete isolation. Family, community, tribe. This is a time to connect and unwind, to relate to others, to celebrate and to have fun. You know, there's some guys that have joined my High Through Most Men's group, which has been such a transformational thing in my life. And I, I see other men that join this and they they just make true friends. And you see that it's given them this ability to sharpen themselves up, or being around other men, other men pushing you, seeing other guys out there like, damn, like a lot of guys will actually say they're surprised when they get in the group. They thought it would be a bunch of nerds, guys talking about no fap and, uh, you know, just effing around. But a lot of times, sometimes you get guys in there that they, they've been in other servers where all they talk about is self-discipline, 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 no fap, uh, waking up early, grinding, grinding, grinding. That's not what this group is about. And I don't think that's helpful, right? I don't think that's helpful. There's a time and place for everything. A lot of times they see us having fun. They see us at the meetups. They expect us to be like these disciplined monks that wake up and meditate. No, we're hanging out. We're having fun. We're going out. We're talking to girls. We're eating good food. We're grilling up. We're fighting. We're doing jujitsu, Muay Thai. We're doing all these things. And I think it comes as a shock to a lot of these guys because they don't expect like this uh, this brotherhood. They don't expect us to have jokes and, and shoot the shit. Even myself, I'm not serious all the time. Dude, I love to have fun. I love to crack jokes and, and uh, you know, laugh and have a, have a blast. You know, that's what brotherhood's about. That's what community is about. It's not supposed to be super serious. We're not in the freaking military. So I think that comes as a shock. You know, part of my, uh, part of what I believe you need community for in your own life, you need a tribe because it gives you support. It gives you fortification against the harshness of life. I mean, think about that. Life is hard, man. And if you were living back in the day and you didn't have a tribe, well, you're going to get killed. You're not going to have food. You're not going to have protection. You're going to be out there in the wilderness all alone. So you need a tribe. Humans have always needed a tribe. It's how you fortify yourself against a chaotic world, a world that doesn't give a damn about you, uh, or, you know, living in this earth that is harsh, harsh winters, no crops, no food, saber-toothed lions out there to kill you, right? You need a tribe of people that you can relate with. And for me, when my parents died, the first thing I realized is I broke the chain. I broke the cycle. I lost my community. It's like my world got flipped upside down because I didn't just lose my parents. I lost a way of life. I lost hanging out with my sisters and brothers every day after school. I took that for granted looking back. I, I, I had to move to another city. They moved to different homes. I was split up. The oldest had six kids and I no longer have a family unit anymore. And so I realized that you know, I had a way to create, I had a way to collect my thoughts in the morning, but I didn't have family. I lost my support group. I had no one to share my victories or defeats with. I had no one to lean on when times were tough and it got very lonely. It got like, you know, it, it got very lonely during this time in life. And looking back, I, man, thank God I just kept persevering. And I, I you know, it was around this time where I realized that I wanted, I wanted to create that in my life. Like I wanted to create community. I think I've actually found my purpose in life, which is uniting the men. Seriously, uniting the men because there's something powerful when guys get together. I, I first stumbled upon this idea when I would go to fellowship. It was prayer service with my father when I was younger. And he would walk around the church. There was like 10, 20 guys. They were all walking around the church just in prayer. I just walk. To be honest, I hated the prayer because it's so boring. But I'd go with them. And then afterwards, we'd go out to eat. This was every like Thursday, every Tuesday or Thursday. And my dad was just so invigorated. I would see him laughing. People were like, hey, Billy Bob, what's up? His name was Bill. He, uh, you know, just joking, shooting the shit with these other guys, all sort of united, supporting each other, talking about their wives and their families and their kids you know, their businesses and stuff. 
And every freaking time I would just go to that, I would just, I just loved it. I, I saw my dad high through most. Like that was the peak of his spirit. You just saw a spirit light up. And then you go, you go, you know, I go with him to the flea markets. He would set up, he had his own little business. He set up at the flea markets. Everyone knew him there. I'd see him social, talking to other guys. He knew the other vendors, having a great time. And that taught me so much. I saw him connecting and being inspired. But then I saw my dad lose his, his light. Like the light went out in his life. He lost the thumos. He lost the fire in the belly. We moved. We moved to Ohio and it was cold in the winters. We were in Florida to begin with. The Ohio weathers were very cold. He couldn't go to the flea markets. He moved away from the church. He didn't have those brothers he had knew for, you know, like a decade of going to the same church. He got away from all this. And the first thing that crumbled was his spirit. And I saw him go down our dark road. And I think he got, you know, involved with some drugs just to cope, maybe some gambling. And I, and I hated to see my father go down like that. He was my hero. And he's still, he's still a huge part of my life. And I, I just see that he was human. And that when you take away the basic human necessity of brotherhood and community and other men that support each other, you're left with an isolated person that is struggling to stay sharp, right? Like, that's what I noticed in my own life when I moved away. I had no one, to, no one to keep me sharp, you know, no one to keep me accountable, no one to push me. I felt like I was alone in this path. And I, I lost my way. I lost sight of God. And God doesn't want us to be alone. We're not meant to be alone. You know, there's a, so, so I realized that purpose in my life is to unite the men because I needed it the most. And I didn't have it, so I had to create that. And I, I see how beneficial that can be to other individuals. Um, and I see just the power of transformation in their life. You know, it says in the Bible, when two or more gather together in my name, there I am in your midst. What a powerful verse that is. When two or more people are gathered together, there God is. There He works in these mysterious ways. The connections you make, the brothers that you meet, the people you meet. And so this time of family, community, and tribe. This is, this is an incredible part of the cycle, and I hope that you guys will find that in your life. And so this is the cycle. I'm going to wrap it up here, but again, collect yourself in the morning. Talk to the muse. Talk to God. Have some sacred time that you can be filled. You know, you can fill up that cup. That way you can empty it again and again. You, you fill it up, you empty it. It bubbles over, and you give that energy by creating. You go out on the hunt. The supplies is ready. A man needs a creative outlet to feel whole. He needs to feel proud of the work that he's putting out there. He needs to feel like he can take charge of his life. And the next one is community. To stay sharp. Iron sharpens iron. To have others that support you and fortify your life. All right? That is the cycle. And I hope that you guys have benefited from this. If you need anything, let me know. And I'll see you guys in the group. Talk to you soon. Hi, Dumos. Peace.